Hey, Ankh, if I, w- I was just going to bring up, I, I don't think we've talked about the over under uh, season win totals put out there, unless we've talked to, about that on another show without me. Uh, I know when we talked to Derek Peterson, the varsity club, he had a thing about like best case, worst case scenarios. Well, right. I guess that's a little different because he was saying nine, three, six, and six. But are you talking about like the Vegas odd one? Yeah, or... yeah. I could bring Boomer in or, or, or Rob, you know, I mean, sure. Fandle yeah, and others have had Nebraska listed at seven and a half as the win total with a lot of juice on the on the over actually um and uh it's a it's a really high number i think it's the same as iowa and the only big 10 west team with a higher win total is, is wisconsin i think an eight and a half um it i think it just indicates how balanced the west probably is perceived to be this year which again considering our schedule i mean this this is an opportunity here to to have a, a really turnaround season but I don't know, seven and a half in from a, a a program and a coaching staff that hasn't delivered more than five is uh, quite the number. I mean, when we had when we were on uh, the Hill Varsity show, I think I said four was our floor. Is that what I said, Honky? Eight and four. You said eight and four was the floor. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Mean, you're you're that, an idiot, Rob. So it's OK. Yeah, well, that's all right. That's OK. But, you know, I I. For the first time in a while, I, I truly believe that that's that could be the case. I mean, I'm I'm looking up and down the schedule, and I think that that's a pretty fair assessment. I also am on board. I, I do think that they can start the season six and zero, seven and zero, six and one. I I do. I I truly look yeah. at the schedule and see that. So yeah, but well, I mean, from a game yeah, standpoint, I'm just gonna say from a crazy standpoint, I I agree with Rob. I don't know if I've ever said that before, but <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know what I'm what I'm doing here, but yeah. <laughs> But he's right when I when he talks about the way the schedule pans out. I I've, I mentioned this before. I've thought through various scenarios. I don't see a scenario where six wins for this team is anything good. There's there's no way that you could pitch a realistic scenario where this team wins only six games this year, and that's progress, that's success, that's something we can shoot for. It's progress because they haven't done it. Right, years. but again, when how I think about how the schedule is laid out, there's no way you can tell me that, you know, you start the game, you start the season with Northwestern, who we pummeled by 85 last year, whatever it was. Yeah, you, got, the year before. you got two jobbers booked next, you know, the Mulkey brothers, you know, at home, and then you've got Oklahoma at the weakest they've been in a while. Still and then you've got – you don't play yeah, Michigan. I, you don't – or excuse me, you don't play Michigan State. You don't uh, have the tough crossovers on the east outside of Michigan. Dave, Rob's just, not wrong yeah. in saying that he's got a good chance of starting as good as they ever have. I, it, it's I, just, I don't it's disagree a, with that. It's right. just a difference of, of perspective right now. I mean, Dave, you just brought up that we lost to Northwestern two years ago. Who gives a shit? I mean, they had yeah, a who, different who gives a, language, uh, hockey. Uh, I said they would beat them by 30 points ago, last that was year. Clearly a, a, a problem for them. So if we're going to bring up what they did two years ago, and it's not like our roster doesn't look a little different. We have 32 different guys on the, the roster. My point right now is anybody that's so sure that we can't win the West, anyone that's so sure that can't happen, what are you talking about? I mean, look at – if you want to just talk about talent, which is always a good place to start from, I would say that we're the most talented team in the West right now. Have been I think for the last – We always have been, that's really. A place to start I mean, yeah. now – You've got to get over all the mistakes that we've made, right? Pretty clear. Why did they make the coaching changes they made? Why, you know, think of the, the special teams and how bad it's been. We're counting on some things that have to happen. Wait, our Bill special Bush, teams important. Bill Bill Bush has to has to do what he did on special teams already at this school 15 years ago. He just has to do it again. Now, Dave, you are not going to be someone that's going to you need to see it. And I'm totally cool with that. You need to see it. You are not. There's nothing we're going to say no, yeah, between right. now and August. I mean, you might as well take the next three months off if you're not. You can't. Nothing's going to change your mind. And that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I mean, you're kind of a bummer sometimes about it, but that's fine. No, I mean, I I, I, say, I, I I hope that I mean, our listeners appreciate me being on the show occasionally because I don't think everybody uh, enjoys drinking the Kool-Aid quite as much as Redcast Rob. I right? I mean, I get it. Some people just want to hear. I'm standing up for Rob stuff. right now. I don't think it's Kool Aid. I think this is okay. Whatever. I mean, yeah. I I just I just think it, it, it's an interesting dialogue. That's all. Yeah, I this mean, isn't Kool Aid, by the way. I was yeah. gonna say. Speaking of Kool Aid, what are you drinking there, Boomer? Uh, uh this is a uh, blueberry bee. It's a modification of a drink I saw the strawberry bee, which is in itself a uh, out of a modern spin on the bee's knees, an old classic gin cocktail. So, I highly recommend it. So I saw it on the uh, Bonneville. Uh, 
a cocktail website or excuse me youtube channel so they they post a lot of good drinks a lot of good recipes so I've kind of modified this one so it's quite That's excellent good. by the way so. and, and by the way dave i i totally appreciate your your sentiments on like the way that i'm feeling about it but i mean i'm trying to be also yes while i'm being positive i mean come on i joke around and say 15 and 0 all the time and you know the national championship but at the same time i did say eight and four on there and i do think it's realistic um and it's okay because every show needs a nick Wright, and you can be our nick Wright right now I don't well, know who that is. And look, when you when you go four and eight and three nine, you better you gotta have some fun. You gotta find some way to enjoy it. But what I will say too is I like how Benning explained us. He didn't call it Kool-Aid, he said it's team positive. And because you can look at things, look, sure, we sure, can still absolutely. go three and nine next year with all of the everything that, that's happened, all the, the big positive moves and the you know, Casey Thompson has to pan out, right? I mean, we we hope that the offense is going to look better with Whipple coaching it. We think that our receivers are going to play better with, with Mickey Joseph coaching them versus Lubick. We all, you know, there's all these things. We can go down the list. We think that we're going to have more alignment with our line play and what our coach wants with Rayola. That's why he hired him. That's why he got rid of Austin, right? There's all these things that point in the right direction. And yet, if you still make mistakes and fumble the ball around and throw interceptions and do all those things, you know, you're going to sit there and, and lose some games you shouldn't. That first game, I can't tell you. And, I mean, you guys have hit the nail on the head with this. That game against Northwestern, I just it, – it, it, I can't picture a good scenario if we don't come back with a win. It is so hard for me to, to do that. That, I, that game is so important to come out of, of Ireland victorious. So no pressure. Well, no, I mean, no pressure. But you know what? That's no pressure. And if – go coach in Tuscaloosa and see if there's no pressure. I mean, you know, there's – coaches will put pressure on you. Tom Osborne – said and one time he goes up until the last couple seasons coaching he never thought he could withstand one losing season so basically he was coaching here through 1998 99 or 88 89 90 you know he'd been here for for 17 18 seasons and felt that if he had one losing season he could get fired so i guess i would say he felt pressure all the time it never was off so i don't if, whether you're coming off a 3 and 9 season or if you're constantly being put in a nine to 10 win season and that's the standard and you can't do any worse, or if you're Nick Saban, if you go 10 and two, you're going to get booed by everybody right now. And if you don't win your division, or win your, your conference, I mean, something's wrong. There's pressure all over the place. The pressure right now is we've got to beat a team that we beat 56 to seven last year, that we have more talent than we need to beat them in Ireland. And we need to come back and get some of that momentum going. The thing that Frost said going into last season, we've never had a chance to do well, they didn't do it last year either. We got to get some momentum. We need to be three and zero when Oklahoma comes into Lincoln for an eleven a.m. kickoff on national television, Fox. I know some people are upset about that, but you know what? It's national TV. We'll have Joel Clad here. And we need to win that game. I, I really do. I mean, you, you start to break it down like that, and it's like all of a sudden I'm, I'm starting to look at the schedule. And I'm like, wow, geez, we're we're six and zero. Uh, <laughs> and well, yeah, I, I would just want to be clear, guys. I mean, like I'm, I'm rooting for um, just like everyone else, and it's not that I don't think they could go eight and four, or nine and three. I think they could. That's definitely within the range of possibilities. Um, and it, it's not even just a prove it thing to me per se. I just that I feel like I just want to uh, cast a more critical eye to the progress they've made this off season, right? And I think they've made some great additions uh, to the well, roster. Okay, so the, be, be they've made some well, good changes to the to the staff. Uh, but there's a lot of things that could go wrong. They could have made all the sure. right moves, and it still doesn't always play out just the way you want it to play out. Well, right? so be, so. but actually, be critical of the moves. Is there a move that is there something? Are are you concerned? And I don't mean I don't mean critical. Like I'm not saying call out a player, but like, is there a move where you're like, oh, I don't know if I see that working out, or or yeah, does I've that already mentioned in... this on previous shows. I don't know if Whipple will work out. I don't. I mean, we've given him a free pass entirely just because of his experience, but his his resume doesn't actually tell you that he's had that much success elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I don't know if that will work. I, and I mean, I, I think that I mean, our roster additions have been really good. I It seems like on paper that let's say guys like, uh, you know, uh, Stefan Wynn or some of the other D linemen are an upgrade over what we had and who, who left. Um but those some of those guys went to Oregon, which is a good Power Five school, and obviously they fought all their coach. But at least those co those players like Casey Rogers knew the playbook and were ready to plug in. Should a defensive lineman be able to be plugged in and play right away? Sure, um, but I mean those those are things that we've seen uh, transfers struggle to to have an impact. 
in year one. And so I, I hope that's not the case. Um, I'm hoping that they're you know, big impact players right off the bat, but it, it hasn't always worked out that way. So yeah. And I'll, of- I'll throw something on Dave's side of thing. You know, you've got Ray Olo coaching the old line. He's never actually been the, the head of line coach at any position he's had before it not a guarantee it's going to work out. And that's, we don't, don't know if we have a healthy Teddy Prohaska right. yet. Yeah. Um, he may not be even ready for Northwestern yet. And I think, I mean, we only had a game and a half of footage. He looked great for that game and a half, and it seems like we really should have him back, but we may not have him back. I don't know if, um, you know, the, the O-line is going to be healthy or deep enough to be ready to go for these first full games to to deliver 6-0, and right? I just don't yeah. know. And, and, you know? and I kind of want to reiterate that, you know, I I say we should be 8-4. and four. Now, I don't know whether – I can't say we're definitely going to go 8-4. and four. I'm not going to be that optimistic and guarantee that. I'm just kind of saying that's kind of my floor, that eight, seven, eight wins. I mean, you're at the point in this staff, you should be delivering that. There's no excuse to be going five or six at this, you know, five wins, six wins at this point. You're five years into it. You've got new coaches that you said you needed. You're dominating the transfer portal like you'd hoped. You basically got every player you said you needed. You've got to go out and prove it now. So that's my floor. I mean, I'm not the athletic director. You know, I if I was, we'd have a steam statue and all sorts of other great stuff on campus, you know. But we're not. So that's kind of why I'm saying that whole eight and four, seven and five in a pinch if we have a whole bunch of injuries or something odd kind of pans out in the season. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not guaranteeing that's what we should be, but I'm saying that that is what my standards would be. If, if I was setting those mystery metrics, which none of us know, that's what mine are this year. Here's a metric that I have. At any level of success, this has to be a better team in November than it is in August, which means in August we need to get we need to come back from Ireland with a with a victory, and that victory can be three to two. We just we need to we need to be one and zero coming back yep. from Ireland. We need to take care of obviously the North Dakota and Georgia Southerns. And then with Oklahoma, I mean, we'll see what happens with Oklahoma, but we gotta, you know, we gotta be three and one at worst, I think, after four games. And that team needs to get better because to your point, Dave, all the things you've said right there are completely fair. They're completely fair. And that means that we need to eventually have a a Teddy Prohaska who's healthy and getting better over the course of the season. Right. Um, You know, I, I, it's totally reasonable to think that we could start off a little slow with some of the changes on both sides of the ball. That's where we need a bill Bush to really step it up on, on game one. We need to win a game because of special teams. Imagine winning a, you know, a three, a hypothetical three to two game because of special teams. You know, we punted them deep into the, you know, gave him bad field position. We make the, the field goal that we need to make all those kinds of things. And we win a game early on that maybe we would have lost in the past because of special teams. And that helps get us over the hump over the course of the season. Um, I'm not saying it's easy. I think sometimes, and I think this is some of the, the Kool-Aid stuff, Rob, you get, uh, you get attacked with, which is fair. I'm, I don't mind you getting attacked, but I don't, I don't, uh, I really don't care but either. Like, it's come not at me. That, like, but it's I, not I feel that like it's, I'm at least making like educated, well, like talk well, about it. I, I'm not just like making this up. I'm not bullshitting anybody like saying that I feel this way and I don't swear on the show, but I'm not, I mean, I'm looking at things. I'm look. I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. Could it absolutely go backwards? It should, but there's, they're not really giving us a ton of reasons to believe that it should other than like, Oh, this all happened in the past. Well, but there are so many things that are different from the last four years this year. The attitude on campus, the attitude of the players, the way the coaches are, are dealing with a lot of like the media and other things. It just feels different this year. That, I don't know how else to say it. And, well, and, and that, that's, that is part, that that's part of the off season stuff is that they're not going to give you a bunch of the bad stuff right now. Right. But having said that 50, I, I, I'll, I'll put no cap on how good the team, how good this team can be. Right. I, I even said that to Derek Pearson when he goes, what's your best case and worst case? I go, my best case is 12 and 0. I mean, why not? That's your best case during the season. But just saying that, that never should imply that any of this is going to be easy. It could be 12 and 0 where every single game is won by three points, even if we, you know, magically got to that, right? And would everyone take that? Would everyone take a 12 and 0 season where you won every game ugly by one point? Hell yeah, right? Even if that meant winning ugly against North Dakota and, you know, and some of those teams too. So, um, Man, how the heck did we get into this? This is, this was a good little. I mean, we're, one second we're talking five wide in Florida. I and, thought Honky was going to wrap up the show, so I wanted to throw. No, a we're doing good. Into I, it. You yes. know, I just no, wanted to good. actually make a show that's entertaining for our, our live listeners. We do have a couple of good comments here. Uh, Stephen Costello asked, uh, 
How can Northwestern bring in enough talent to overcome the ass stomping it took last year? It's an easy answer, Stephen. They've never had more talent than us. Gerald has out coached us, uh, not just Frost, but others um, throughout his tenure. Um, he, he, he typically has one bad season and bounces back and goes nine and three. So never count him out. Um, and the Northwestern we should, two years we should ago, beat him. Yeah. Yeah. And the Northwestern two years ago that you referenced Dave originally, and I think which was what kind of got me going there was that was the team that had their, their previous defensive coordinator. They actually experienced last year, some of the transition that, yeah. and this is the thing that a lot of the schools, the, uh, you know, Iowa and, and Northwestern are schools that have had a lot of continuity in their staff year after year after year. Northwestern experienced a little bit of that change last year defensively, and we put up 56 points on that defense. Um, they're, you know, I don't, do I see us putting 56 points up on Northwestern again? No, I don't, you know, but do I see us being more talented than them? Yes, I do. But to Dave's point, I can't pinpoint a single season over the last 10 years or 12, 12 years that we've been in this league where we haven't had more talent than Northwestern and, and mistakes are the things. And I'll keep harping on those. Go back and watch our varsity club podcast two weeks ago with Derek Pearson. And all I can, t- all I can talk about is just mistakes. We have to cut mistakes. Well, I'm checking the 311 tour schedule too right now because last year when we played Northwestern, I went to a 311 concert and that's when they destroyed him. So I'm going to try to see if I can get. Thanks for that deep to analysis. Another, to another. Uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome because I'm I'm not of anything. I'm not superstitious, right? There you're you just go. a little stitious. Yeah, I'm a little stitious. <laughs> Do we have any other comments or questions or anything there, Boomer? I think Jim in Minnesota had a good one about uh, where is the point in the season where Dave would become team positive in his mind. And yeah, what, what 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 would the record need to be, Dave, for you to kind of – or, you know, what what do you need to see for that – that prove it? I need to see it. What do you need to see, I guess? How how much of it would you need to see? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. And, you know, I, I it's not something like, oh, I need to see him beat Oklahoma or anything like that. I just think – I need to see them not, to your point, not make mistakes and blow games that they should should win. I mean, so I would start start to see that by them just taking care of business and winning comfortably versus Northwestern would be a, a really good start towards that. Um, I would probably say, you know, maybe by early to mid-October there, where if we, let's say, hypothetically lose to Oklahoma, but then come back and take care of business versus Indiana team, that, um, you know, beat us uh, a couple of years ago and then, you know, took care of Rutgers and we're, we're standing at, um, you know, what, five and one at that point. Um, I, I, I feel pretty good that we are going to, you know, get to a bowl game. Uh, maybe I'd wait till we get to six, six wins. Uh, because I think we're, it, it, you know, I mean, the end of the end of the season, we have Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa. I mean, if, if we do get to six, then I'd really judge the season on how many of those can we get because uh, we'd love to get a, a marquee victory versus Michigan or beat one of our kind of big West, uh, big 10 West rivals. That seems like we haven't been able to get a trophy in years. From. Sure, I mean, yeah. would that be a concern though of yours, Dave? I mean, if we were coming out of that Rutgers, Indiana stretch five and one, and then we only finish with one more win the rest of the year, I mean, regardless of who it was, I mean, that's not, that. that's why I've always said six wins doesn't do a lot for me because You'd Five like of those to get wins at least are more one of those in that first half. I mean, yeah. you can't go the the second half of the year with only one win. I, I don't see I how that you. you can sell that as, especially since most of those are your serious Big Ten West or excuse, foes if divisions are still a thing. Yeah. That means you're losing to Minnesota, you're losing to Iowa, you're losing to Wisconsin, you're losing to Illinois for God's sake, Purdue. I mean, y- you've got to be winning those games at this point. So that's you know that's why I've had such trouble with six being some great. First of all, of I, I think yeah. I think Purdue could be pretty decent this year, and and we're, we go to vicious West Lafayette. Um, so I mean, you know, making thinking we're going to have six there automatically is, is a little bit, you know, you know, I, I would be cautious with that approach. But point, your point is taken there. I mean, I, I get that you feel like we need to get seven or or preferably eight to feel like Frost and company are safe. I think Honky, you've made this point. I mean, I don't think you make the investment with the coaching staff switch and the restructuring of the contract and all that type of stuff. And then if you go six and six, you still fire them, right? Because you you've invested and you're saying, Hey, I think Bill Bush and Mickey Joseph can help recruit the way we need to recruit. 
that we're taking care of. You know, we were good enough to get to six. I think he gets at least one more year if he goes six and six. That's just my take. Yeah, I saw to, somebody to, to Boomer. Do I feel positive after starting six and one and finishing six and six? No, but do I? Do they think? Do I think they fire him? I don't think so. I, I saw someone made a comment on a previous YouTube. Uh, one of the videos that we had out there. And by the way, Redcasters always uh, feel free to comment. We like to, you know, respond and, you know, like, and do all that stuff. But um, somebody had said that, you know, uh, at the very minimum that we need to go seven and six, not six and six, but seven and six, meaning that we need to go to a, a bowl game and we need to finish the season with a positive 500, you know, above 500 finish. Meaning that if you went six and six, turned around, went to a bowl game and lost and you finished six and seven, that, you know, somehow that wouldn't that wouldn't be good enough either. And I would again, we need wins, we need winning seasons, we need bowl games. These are all things that you know. At the end of the day, here in in this world of compromise, which is what the Redcast is, you know, this is how we come together, and we all agree on that. At the very least, there's the basic standard is that we need to be getting to bowl games now. There's no there's no ifs ands or buts about that. I have people that ask me, what if what if everything that happened last year happens again and we go three and nine a second season in a row? And I go, well, I give up if that happens because that's where we get into the whole historical talk. Last year was historically strange on so many levels, and God, I God hope we don't ever have to go through that again because that is about as you know. I, I said, would you guys take twelve and zero if they're all one point losses? I asked that because we went three and nine, and we know how those nine losses went, right? I mean, it, it, it's you're this far away and we're, th we're this far away, but it might take this much to get over that hump. That's the thing. This, this, this doesn't mean it's easy to get this. We are this far away, but we've made this many changes and you got to hope that that is enough to get us over that hump and, and go from there. I mean, we've got, a, we've got a score, Dave, your stat about, uh, you know, yards per, per point. We need yep. to score at the rate that we've already we been putting be yards up on teams, be more efficient and then uh, you need things like special teams to come around with it. And and let's Wait, special teams are important hockey, really. Special teams are a tad important, Boomer. I think you've heard that before a couple times, yeah, right? Yeah, it might have come up once or twice. Yeah. So, all right, good stuff, guys. Anything else uh, on the questions or comments, Boomer? Uh, no, not a lot of comments. I did. Uh, there was a comment earlier about uh, when we were talking about divisions, and uh, one of the commenters said he didn't want to see you know o uh, Ohio State and Michigan you know rematching every year. I did. Uh, that gave me a chance to go back and look at a a graphic that uh, Fox Sports came up with, just kind of showing what the Big Ten would have been, you know, with divisions without. Um, now, granted, the schedules would be different if there weren't you know, divisions at the, at the time. So who knows how the actual schedules would have played out, but it, it's kind of interesting how it really wouldn't have changed a whole heck of a lot. You wouldn't see a whole lot of, you know, Michigan, Ohio state rematches. There are a couple there, but yeah, quite a, quite often you would have had the same teams paired up in those championship games. That was kind of interesting. So it is interesting. Yeah. So might not change as much as we thought again. And again, it depends on scheduling. So that <laughs> well, and people that. say they don't want to see Ohio state, Michigan rematches. The reason you didn't see a lot of Michigan up there is because they sucked most of those years. Well, there's and that too. No yeah. difference. Yeah. Michigan's no different than us in this case too, where it's like, I don't. It, what, at the end of the day, whether you're in divisions or not, we just we got to be good. <laughs> we yeah, winning games helps. Michigan, yeah. Michigan was good last year and 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 won you know won some of the close games against us too. Here, here's a one last question before we get to our parting shots. If Nebraska had been better the last decade. Would we be having this discussion about going away from divisions? If no, we would have won three or four Big Ten West and went eleven or one, and we're a top, uh, no, I don't think so. Because to... maybe I mean, if we are you saying we, if we just won the West, or if we had have won a few of the championships, we were a top ten type program like they expected us to be, and won the West more times than not. Possibly. I mean, I guess Wisconsin's been a top 10 team these last, you know, in the last decade. I mean, granted, they didn't win a whole lot of Big Ten titles, if any. I, you know, well, they did when, when they yeah. did in the old leader and right, legends and legends leaders or, or that metropolitan that and, you know, Atlantic yeah. divisions or whatever they used to be. But yeah, I, I think it, I think it does come down to what you said, Dave, about how the imbalance in the conference has just been the result of those title games. It's mostly just Ohio State winning so darn many of them. It just seems so out of whack. Easily. Yeah. I mean, if Nebraska had been better this last decade and won two or three of them, it might not seem that out of whack, and maybe we wouldn't be having this conversation. But Or if Wisconsin would have won a couple of them, we might not be having this conversation at this point. It's just it's, What it's come down to is just Ohio State's dominated the, 
the conference so much and those title games so much, I think it's probably kind of skewed it in a lot of people's minds. So yeah, I, I just I, think the way that they've set up the scheduling for the last few years is just boring too. I mean, you play, it feels like you're playing the same teams from the other side, you know, from the other side, they're on the East more, you just know, certain Ohio teams. More than I mean, do you yeah. want to play Rutgers yeah. and Maryland more though, Rob? Yeah, I mean, they, I'd rather play Ohio state and Michigan than I would the big 10 Indiana. Want, and, you know, no, I just want to yeah. see more balance. Well, the big 10, all. the That's big all. 10 wanted to Dave's point from day one, they want mm-hmm. the, pre, they want the premier programs and Nebraska is a premier program. We have not been a premier team, but we are the a premier the brand program in the in the conference. They want to see those matchups. That's why when we started off, you go back to those first couple of seasons of leader, leaders and legends, and we're playing Michigan and Ohio State, but we're also doing a crossover with Penn State. They you know, we want they wanted us to play every and we had Wisconsin on the schedule all those times. They wanted us playing those premier teams, and that's good for TV and all that. Um, if we were what they were hoping for when we came in. And if the West, if we weren't just winning the West three or four times, but actually winning the conference. So Dave, mm-hmm. like you said, it's been At what eight, or, twice, eight yeah. or nine, you know, straight times yep. the East has won it. If the West had won it two or three times and it happened to be only us and who cares, who cares if it's only us, it's usually only Ohio state winning it for the, for the East either. Um, the West has actually had in season as much success against the Ohio state as anybody Purdue and Iowa teams that have, have beaten uh, Ohio State, but when it gets to that championship game, no one's been able to do it. And if we had, maybe maybe it's different in conference. But I think some of this is national stuff that's starting to happen with the divisions. Anyways, we're seeing that with like, did you say the Pac-12 already is even given divisions the boot this year? Yeah, they they threw them out already for this season. So yeah, they're how in the it. world do you do? So they're just keeping the same schedule. But yeah, it doesn't look like we've changed any scheduling. They're just gonna play the top couple teams, and, and I would imagine. It, Probably isn't much different than the Pac-12 when it was the Big Ten. Probably going to get the same couple teams playing anyway. It's Oregon, be Oregon and USC or Utah or something. Yeah, it's not yeah. like California is going to sneak in there or anything. So. Hey. <laughs> or Colorado, God forbid. <laughs> That's right. I forgot they were even in the Pac-12 there. For I think they did too, Rob, so it's just <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> 